Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel, and today's video is all about the subject of, is 128 gigabytes enough for iPhone storage? And I'm going to explain to you why I don't think it is. First of all, also, I want to thank everybody that subscribed from the most recent overly explosive uh, video that I thought I was recording as a joke about updating YouTube Prevanced. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> um... I didn't expect 200 of you to subscribe and 60,000 views from that video, but here we are. So, this post is all about, from Mac Rumors, uh, 128 gigabytes. Is it enough storage for an iPhone? Let's give a little bit of a read to see the background and all that, but let's also remember this is coming from the company that thought 8 gigabytes of RAM was enough. And it's clearly not, especially if you updated to like Mac OS 13 or whatever. The iPhone 15 offers lots of storage for lots of photos, or at least that's what Apple boasts about in their latest ad. Whether that rings true for you depends on what you do with your iPhone and which storage option you choose. But before you open your wallet, here are some things to consider. Let's see what Mac Rumors has to say, because they are an Apple website. This should be interesting. Um, <clears throat> the entry level storage tier for the iPhone 15 is 128 gigabytes. That's a notable increase from the 64 gigabyte baseline that persisted until the iPhone 13 in 2021. When you consider that 2018's iPhone X came with as little as 64 gigabytes, the base storage option for Apple's latest device might even begin to sound generous. It's not, but we'll get to that little foreshadowing. It's not. However, the, uh, this generational upward shift simply reflects the growing demand for more storage space on our digital habits broaden to encompass everything from high-resolution photography to multi-gigabyte AAA games to extensive app libraries. So true. With the iPhone 15's camera capabilities now, including a 48-megapixel photo and 4K video recording, the space required for these high-end resolution files is substantial. These advancements undoubtedly enhance the quality of content captured, but they also eat up local storage capacity, rendering what once seemed like ample space insufficient for the needs of many users. <clears throat> Let me stop here. I'm going to stop here because I want to say that 128 gigabytes on an iPhone is not enough 110 percent the iphone and the whole apple ecosystem is very strange um for reference i've been a computer technician a cell phone technician and data recovery technician all combined in a professional sense for a little over 10 years and even before that, I was doing it as a hobby in high school and things of that nature. 128 gigabytes today is not enough. And I say this because of the way the ecosystem with Apple works. Many people, and this is from talking from to people while working in sales, while uh, doing data recovery, while doing repairs, while doing data transfers for people when they buy or upgrade their phone, whether it's third-party purchase or I'm working at Best Buy or a Verizon store or something like that. 128 gigabytes people are not happy with. Uh, their storage is almost full. A good 35% of customers, I tell them, look, you should go 256 because you're at 95 gigs out of 128 and 20 of that is being taken up by the system. So realistically, you only have 10 and a half gigabytes open of available space to store your photos, your apps, your games, whatever. It's a nightmare with Apple products because people are afraid to delete off the cloud and the device. Even if I go through a device, like I had a friend message me recently about switching Apple accounts because he realized he was still sharing an account with his mother multiple years after becoming an adult, moving out, etc. And he was afraid of losing stuff because he simply logged out of the account. Even though Apple asks you when removing an iCloud account from your iPhone, hey, 
Are you sure you want to remove this account? Do you want to leave this stuff on the device? I have still heard of things getting deleted. I told him, make a backup of both phones in case something gets deleted. It's not going to hurt anything. And if anything, it's a good safety precaution. So let's just say 128 is not enough because people are afraid to delete things. Things take up more storage. And there's a major bug with iOS that there isn't any like emergency storage or swap storage or a way to turn on the device anymore if you fill the storage. There's this big issue with Apple devices that Apple devices will allow you to just fill your storage to maximum and then the phone won't even turn on because there's not enough storage for temporary files. This happens constantly with iPhones. When I was working a professional data recovery job, I would have to say a good 30% to 50% of iPhones that came in once a month were iPhones with full storage that we could not recover the data off of because they fixed what we called fix flash. Fix flash with tools like 3U or even with uh, IPSW uh, installers, if you did it from the command line, if we used to have what was called fixed flash, but that stopped working as of iOS 16, I believe it was. What we would do is we would click fix flash and what it did was it would not install system applications and it would actually mark them as like kind of uninstalled even though they're not. And now like I was saying, as of iOS 16, fix flash didn't work. Very annoying thing that Apple would patch something that was useful because what we would do is we would fix flash it would not install the system apps. It would leave some of them out and you would see them as gray like you uninstalled an app, but you could still get it back from the app store. And then it would allow the phone to turn on because it freed up enough space to have temporary files during the system boot. That doesn't work anymore. Among other things that don't work anymore. It's really annoying. So let's see, is iCloud to the rescue? Apple's iCloud service presents a solution to the device storage limitations, offering a range of plans that extend beyond the meager 5 gigabytes of free storage. It's not great. It's not a good option. It is it is a good option for people that understand how to use it properly. The problem is Apple thinks it's simple enough for the average person. It's not. Um, and the reason I say that is it goes back to people being afraid to delete stuff off their phones. I don't care if you offer me two terabytes a month for 10 bucks a month. People are afraid to accidentally delete something off of both the cloud and their phone because of the way the Apple ecosystem works. And that's why people walk around with 10 plus year old photos they don't even look at on their iPhones. So iPhone storage versus iCloud. I don't think I need to really go through that. I think my whole point has kind of been made that it's not enough and you need to have more storage from the get-go. 128 is not enough in 2024. I really hope the iPhone 15 comes out with 256 at minimum to solve the issue of people getting 128s because also generally when there is a deal for phones when they're brand new like a trade-in deal or whatever you're getting the base storage and that's where a lot of people are getting caught up is they don't understand that they're getting the base storage because there's not a deal option to go up in storage size. Samsung did a good job with this. Samsung usually has the option of if you pre-order the Galaxy S24 or 23 or the, I'm guessing they'll do it with the S25 because it's always successful. If you pre-order and trade in your old device, they will upgrade your storage for free. So if you buy the 128, you get the 256. If you buy the 256, you get the 512. That's kind of how it works with Samsung, which is wonderful because they understand that the storage isn't enough. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the little chat. Thanks to all the new subscribers. It was awesome. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.